In episode 43 of DevNet Snack Minute, Matt and Kareem, with special guest Chloe Kaufman, give you an exclusive preview of the newest developer framework for the WebEx platform, Embedded Apps. These JavaScript web apps can embed within WebEx spaces and meetings and can be developed by anyone. Enjoy! Hey Snackers, this is Kareem Iskander. I'm a tech advocate with Cisco Learning and Certification. Hey everyone, I'm Matt DiNapoli. I am one of the managers of developer advocacy with Cisco DevNet. Welcome to episode 43 of DevNet Snack Minute. DevNet Snack Minute is your 10 minute weekly all things DevNet where we learn about coding, APIs, or just some cool stuff we think you might like to know. The thing we're gonna to talk to you about today is WebEx with our guest, Chloe. Chloe, do you mind introducing yourself? Hi there, I'm so excited to be here. My name is Chloe Kaufman. Uh, I work within the WebEx partnerships team and I'm a business development manager. Uh, welcome to the, to the show, Chloe. Um, you know, I've been hearing uh, some, some murmurs about embedded apps in WebEx, but I'm a little confused because uh, we've been able to embed uh, WebEx into applications, um, you know, for a long time now with the widgets and everything. Um, is there something I'm missing there? Yeah, so uh, to give the context of what Embedded Apps is live today, which is super exciting, and a big difference that we're, we have here is that instead of being able to embed WebEx somewhere else, which is what we have with the voice and video SDK and the widgets, um, this allows for other apps to come inside now of WebEx. And that um, service is within the meeting side as well as the messaging side. That's awesome. Okay, so just the opposite of what I just said. Okay, cool. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, so the idea here is, I mean, people are living inside of WebEx uh, to do their collaboration, both their meetings as well as the asynchronous side. And uh, we've had a way to pull in, you know, apps to a certain extent with bots um, and the integrations that we have with OAuth on the messaging side. Uh, now we're taking it up a level. We're having the ability to have web apps now full, full fledged service within the client. So that means with it, we could build custom apps, you know, for our organizations can build custom apps and embed them in their WebEx services um, to interact and collaborate with each other. Um, it doesn't need to be kind of a third party partner. It doesn't need to be, you know, a big name app that we're that we're used to seeing, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, today we're launching with uh, a set of great partners and companies that are going to be discoverable and accessible to all of our users. And actually, the way that we're rolling this out is that it's turned on by default. Uh, admins have the ability to go and turn off or to only allow for certain apps to show. But we want people to adopt this, so we're, we're pushing it out. And the best way that we thought to share that is to have you know, these great partners to launch with to showcase you know, what are the use cases with you know, collaboration, having being able to have document sharing and have that open up instead of context switching over um, to a different app or being able to use Miro and sticky notes and collaborate live. Um, also, you know, social and, and polling, being able to pull that into the meeting because we all need to have a little bit of fun together as well. So we're launching with those, but in addition, you are absolutely correct. Now we're, there's the ability to have apps that are rolled out just to your WebEx site, to your organization. Actually, just yesterday, I was brainstorming with someone at Cisco on what are some Cisco and Cisco use cases that we could actually maybe start to leverage. So I'd love, if you have some ideas, I'd love to talk to you too. <laughs> so what it sounds like is, it sounds like you have a kind of a pre-built applications that you can start using today uh, mm -hmm. within your WebEx, your instance of WebEx, as well as allowing developers, not just partners, right? Allowing developers to kind of leverage an SDK to build their own application and bringing into their instance of WebEx. Is that correct? Yes, that's absolutely correct. So there's an emphasis, I think, on uh, my side and what I'm saying because we, I work on the partner side, but uh, this is why I wanted to have this conversation here. This is going to be open to anyone who is a WebEx developer, and to be considered a WebEx developer, you just need to go to the WebEx site and start looking at the APIs. So this will be accessible and uh, a feature that everyone will be able to to use. We're going to have organizations that we give out in order to do this development work as well. So if you want to be able to actually have and see what it's like to be an admin and how you would push something out to an entire org, uh, we'll have that ability to do that, which is what I will show here. 
So I think where I wanted to start actually is to go over to the WebEx Meetings app uh, just to show what that looks like for an app to surface. So I'm working with one of our uh, partners, Hermes, who has an app that's focused on fun, which like I said, we all need a little bit of that, especially since we don't spend as much time together in person. So I'm, start, I'm joining a meeting right now. Um, I, what you'll be able to see here is this apps button in the bottom right corner. So when I click on this, and this is our partner's uh, actual demo instance, and they were kind enough to let me go in and poke around on it, which is uh, uh, their great group to work with. So I'm going to go in to uh, one of these apps. So this is what you'll see. This is the app tray. Um, there will be multiple apps within here. Uh, if there are not any, it might be disabled. And uh, so I'm going to go ahead in here and click on one of their apps. One of the things that I could do here is expand this bar out for myself. I can also pop it out if I want. Um, and like I said, this is just a JavaScript web app. So I can go in here now. I wanted to play. Uh, they've got a bunch of great games in here. I wanted to actually play You're Smarter Than You Think um, to try because I think Kareem thinks he's smarter than he is. <laughs> <laughs> it actually says you are smarter than you think. So are we going to prove it right or wrong? <laughs> yeah, well, I guess that's what that's what we're here to find out. <laughs> so as part of this flow, uh, you'll see that actually there's the ability to open together. So this has... Uh, the notion of pushing out to everyone else who is on the call to either see the same content as you or something different. Um, and this is where I think it's really powerful, especially for something like this, where we want to have um, different experiences or require different logins or authentication um, with different apps. So uh, just for the sake of the demo, I'm not going to click this because no one else is on my bridge. But if I did, then they would be seeing what I see here, and but they would not be able to click uh, until I get it started. And that is just by their design. There's there's different ways that you can design that user experience and flow uh, based on what works best for you. We're in here now. I'm going to click start the funtivity. All right, the first one. Colors added to the stage light using this. Oh, I know the I know answer. This. See, I am oh. smart. <laughs> What's the answer, Cream? It's D. Final answer. Ooh. You must have worked in the theater. <laughs> okay, thanks, Kareem. Um, and so with this, everyone, so if there are multiple people on here, we would see their name and how, how well they're doing. So I'm going to go in and do the next one. And what part of Earth's atmosphere would you find the ozone layer? Oh, crap. I don't know this one. It's the stratosphere. I think it's the stratosphere, but let's find out. It is. Ooh, awesome. I know my science. Yeah. Again, just an example, you can go through 10 of them. And uh, I'm really looking forward to actually using this on my team. And Kareem, maybe we can actually play for real and uh, put something put something actually on the line. <laughs> so this is an app. We have it. I could go start using it now. If I want to build my application, like maybe, you know, uh, a Matt application that shows me a picture of Matt that I can share with everybody <laughs> when I'm on a call. How do I do that? Yes. Great, and I love that use case. Uh, so I'm going to show you where you go on the developer portal, and you know this will be the frame of reference for any updates or any additions that we add to the framework as we're being extremely agile right now as we're we're going through uh, kind of the refinement process and preparing for this launch. So within here, like I said, if you just log in, uh, create an account, you'll be able to log in and create the app itself, which I'm going to show you how to do. But first, I'm just going to poke around to show the documentation. If I go into the dev site, there's really two places. There's uh, embedded apps overview, which has great, you know, uh, information talking about the flow, how you can do this in the meetings client, as well as in the spaces in the WebEx app, where it's uh, the messaging side, which uh, there's some pictures down here. Just don't want to discount that. I think it's a really huge value proposition that we have to not only have a, an app within the meeting side, as well as on that asynchronous messaging side. So this is where you could get that information for the overview and creating it and the use cases. And then the other thing that is probably the most important for our developers is where to find the API reference. So um, the JavaScript F SDK can be found here and has information about what are the objects and what are the triggers that you could have within the clients that we offer for the different exposure elements that we offer. And I will say we've gotten a lot of really great feedback in, in terms of how our documentation, um, how thorough it is, and uh, just all the information being there, which makes me really excited. Okay, so I'm going to go into the to actually create the app. And when you're creating an app in the portal, you're just 
you're giving us, you're giving WebEx the information to tie uh, the different elements together. So how does it know what to surface within the meetings app um, and where does it surface? So that's what creating an app is. It's really just giving that information for the context to be there. So here, when I go to my apps, uh, there's the create a new app button where this has always been here. This is where you will find uh, how to, you know, where you would put a bot so you can get that machine account and that token ID similar for the integration side of the guest issuer. Now there's embedded apps. So I'm gonna go in and show you the one that I already have filled out. So I've got a glitch app here. And this is where that information goes in terms of, like I said, which context you want it to show up in. Um, and once it's created, you do get an app ID. But one the the important pieces of information relevant to this is, like I said, it's a web app. So what does that start page look like? As well as what are the domains that are allowed for that open together to push to the other side? So that's more of a security measure there. And then if you're doing meetings and spaces, you'll see there's there's an option to have different start URLs for each of those because they might be slightly different experiences. Yeah, this is an interface we're used to seeing for building bots and integration. So, I mean, it doesn't seem a bridge too far to figure this out. Yeah, exactly. It looks very familiar. It's, it's the exact same thing I thought, Matt, actually. Um, could I, just before we wrap up, just a final question. Could I create a bot that I that would live when I open my WebEx Meet and, and versus my WebEx uh, messaging? Or is are all bots pointed to the messaging? So... Bots are really just machine accounts that can do whatever it is that you feed them the information to do. So now that we have, you know, REST APIs for the WebEx meeting side, and, you know, we've had REST APIs for the messaging side, uh, you know, there definitely can be a flow that you could work through in terms of, you know, what you would want to do with a meeting. Uh, I know we're building out more APIs to, to have functionality around the messaging and chat side. Um, so, I mean, you can get creative, absolutely. So one last piece that I want to show here is, you know, now that I did that creation is what does it look like now within the meetings client? So here's that demo uh, app that I created here. There's a screen you'll see that I did not see on the other one. That's because it's still in development mode. It's not pushed out to my entire organization. So it does ask PII or no PII. That is a setting that the admin can put globally or individually for each app if they want to allow for that app to have access to, you know, user information and definitely check the documentation in terms of what information we surface. So um, I'm going to do without and click open. And uh, this is a cool demo app because it just shows some of the objects that we keep, that we have uh, to be able to get information about the WebEx meeting. So here, for example, if I get attributes, I get to see, you know, that has meeting information here and client information, as well as being able to do some testing with the open together button and uh, setting the share URL. And I can see now that button opens up. So being able to just get a little bit hands on with what's happening here. But this could be any app. This could be that app that has pictures of Matt. So that is the last <laughs> of that development piece, which is pretty cool. This is great information. And I'm excited to start using it in my meetings and potentially even building apps that have pictures of me in every meeting that I run. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, before we let you go, uh, we always ask this of our new guests. Uh, what's one superpower you would like to have and why? Uh, yeah, I think I have to go with, uh, this one, you know, it's probably said by a lot of people, but being able to teleport, I'd love to be able to, uh, see my mom and my grandparents whenever I wanted to, um, or right. to go to Aruba whenever I want to. So if, uh, one day when we can do that, uh, I will be the first in line. Yeah, very popular one, but one that I think we'd all like. So Chloe, thank you so much for showing us this. We're really excited. Uh, to have you on here and, and show us everything that's coming out in WebEx and uh, Snackers, go check it out in your WebEx environment. Check out the documentation on the developer site and we'll see you next time on DevNet Snack Minute. Thank you, Snackers.